Hi there, head squeezers. I hope you're all well. No James May today. He actually dropped me an email that said he was busy plotting what he described as his glorious revenge uh, on some bloke that's been winding him up for the past few years, a guy called Clarkson. No idea. Anyway, we've got a brilliant trio of questions from you guys, uh, including talking about the importance of breakfast, uh, colour blindness, and what is the point of fingernails? So let's get stuck in. The first one is from Facebook from James Pell, who asks, why is breakfast the most important meal of the day? The clue is in the name, break fast. You are breaking your fast of not eating throughout the evening. And when you wake up, your brain needs fuel. In fact, your brain cells need twice as much energy as the cells in the rest of your body, which is kind of interesting. And that's because the neurons are in a state of kind of constant metabolic activity. They're always repairing and rebuilding stuff. So the fuel that it needs to keep those brain cells going, in fact, all your cells going is glucose and when you eat your food it gets digested down and it gets turned into glucose and other simple sugars um, and they go straight into your bloodstream and they're taken all around the body to wherever they're needed including your brain. So does that mean that you can just eat a chocolate bar or a sugary cup of coffee for breakfast? Well, yes, it's gonna give you that, that boost because you're gonna get a peak in your blood sugar levels, but it's also gonna trigger your pancreas to absolutely dump loads of insulin. Now the problem with that is that then, then triggers all your cells to then suck in as much glucose from your bloodstream as possible. That causes the whole of the amount of glucose available to drop and you get less glucose going to your brain, which means you start feeling a little bit kind of out of there and a bit sleepy and a bit cranky and a bit tired. Breakfast should actually provide about a quarter of your daily nutrients and that's why they say that muesli and porridge and fruit and that sort of stuff is, is the best thing that you could eat for breakfast. Also, research shows that uh, actually people who skip breakfast are more likely to be overweight, and that's because you're then more likely to eat more food later in the day and to snack more regularly too. So it looks, James, like our mums were actually right. All that stuff about missing breakfast, it's actually something right. So thanks, mum, you were right. Um, click on the old deer if you want to subscribe to Head Squeeze and check out more of these videos. That will keep her happy. Okay, next one is through YouTube from J1OE7 who asks, what is color blindness? So time for a bit of anatomy. Images are processed on the back of your eye on a layer of light sensitive cells known as rods and cones. There are two different types. There are rods that are responsible for seeing when there's low light levels and cones that are responsible for seeing when it's daylight and when you're looking at various colors as well. There are three different types of cone cells that allow you to perceive light wavelengths as color. There's the ones that are responsible for seeing red light, ones for blue light and ones for green light. And they can also team up so you can see all the different colors of the rainbow. So for example, you can get red and blue teaming together so you can see purple. Now, colour blindness happens when one or more of those types of cone cells are missing or are faulty. It's usually hereditary, so it's normally in your genes, it's passed down through your family from your parents, um, but it can be caused by illness or ageing or exposure to some types of chemicals as well. Red-green colour blindness is the most common and it's more likely to affect men than it is women. And the reason why is really interesting. It's down to our chromosomes. They contain our genes, which are basically the instruction manual for how to make proteins, which build up into, into cells and tissues and up into organs. Now, we all have 23 pairs of chromosomes and this colour blindness, red-green, is all down to the 23rd pair, the final pair, which are known as the sex chromosomes. Now, now females have two X chromosomes, whereas men, males, have one X and one piddly little Y chromosome. And the gene that's responsible for the red-green colour blindness, now, women have to have two of those. They have to have one on each of the X chromosomes for it to be in effect and for you to have red-green colour blindness. But men only have to have one on that one single X chromosome, which is why it's much more likely for men to be red-green colour blind than women. Interestingly, blue colour blindness affects men and women equally, and that's because the gene for that one sits on a non-sex chromosome, so it affects everyone the same. 
Now, time for the final one for this week, and this is from Corbin Luce, who asks, why do we have fingernails and what is their purpose? Now, like our hair, and check out one of my earlier videos for all about why we have hair and does it turn gray because we get stressed. So fingernails are made out of the same stuff as hair. It's a protein called keratin. Now, we're not the only creatures to have fingernails. You have hawks that have talons, you have horses that have hooves, and interestingly, crocodiles have a kind of thimble-shaped thing that goes over the end of their digits, which is very similar. Now, the oldest evidence of nails in modern primates dates right back to 55.8 million years ago, and it's a now extinct lemur-type monkey, which has a name that I'm definitely not going to try to pronounce because I will get it wrong. Um, <laughs> they use them for all sorts of things like gripping and climbing and ripping open food like small seeds and nails. They also use them for uh, protecting their finger, of course, and also because it was a really good way to, to pull out body lice. Um, so fingernails are quite simply just left over from our evolutionary past from one of our old primate relatives. Um, they uh, are still looking to research though to see whether the primates did actually paint theirs before going out on a big night. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for me right now. Thanks so much. Keep those questions coming in. Um, of course, write them in any of the comments below here or uh, put them on our Facebook page or tweet us them in. And until next time, happy head squeezing.